How to start a machine shop in 2025. Throughout all of the challenges that you're gonna face as a machine shop owner, just getting started is hard enough. So we're gonna go through how to finance a piece of equipment, get it on your floor for as cheap as possible, educate yourself for as little money as possible, the bare minimum items that you need floating around your shop to be effective, and then the process of how to start a business entity, how to start a bank account inside of that business entity, how to get paid and find customers. So that is the subject of today's video. So I hope you guys enjoy this content and let's get into it. All right, guys, I hope you're ready to uh, listen to me yap for about 20 minutes. So we're gonna go through how to start a machine shop for as cheap as possible, how to put a machine on your floor, the um, variables you should probably think about when it comes to putting a machine on your floor, and things that you need to have floating around your shop, ways to cheaply educate yourself, and then how to find work in the machining field. So, step one, getting a machine on your floor. Weight, size, and power requirements are probably the biggest variables, along with how expensive the tooling is that you put inside of your machine. So with these variables in mind, it's an obvious solution to go with the PCNC 440 mil from Tormach. Um, a couple of reasons that we would wanna do this as well is cash flow. You don't want to over leverage yourself. This machine right here behind me is on a 32 month term at $1,726 a month for every payment that I make. You do not want that when you're starting out. You're just trying to learn. You're trying to navigate this uh, territory before you get into heavier payments. So this is a machine that you can quickly pay off once you learn how to run it and I show you how to get customers. The payment on this machine is $288.55. This leasing and financing option is where we're gonna go. If you click on leasing and financing, it is half the price for six months. If you use the promo code HALF2025. Now I'm not sponsored by Geneva Capital either, but Geneva Capital is who you would be going through. The process of going through Geneva Capital is very simple. You click on the finance application, you give them your W-2, and you give them a couple weeks worth of pay stubs. They're gonna review this information, they're gonna do an income analysis and then they're gonna approve you for a certain amount. You finance the machine, they put it on the truck and they bring it. You just have to make sure there's a forklift here or you get a lift gate truck. If you have a forklift, you unload it and then you have to assemble it inside of your shop. So there are a couple of things that you need to have floating around your shop to make, make this successful. You need a 120 volt outlet you're going to need a saw to cut material. So the saw that I recommend is gonna be in the description. All of these items that are from Amazon are gonna be in the description. So the, here's the saw. It's fairly simple. You plug it in, you run it, you cut material to size. The next item are machine skates. Machine skates are for positioning your machine around the floor. They're invaluable to have. Like you almost need to have them in a machine shop. I have a service grinder. You can see that's back there, it's blue. That thing is 2,000 pounds and it's only about as big as my toolbox. It's impossible to move on a concrete floor without these skates. Also my machine is uh, roughly 5,000 pounds so these are perfect. The Tormach as well. You can do well with scooting your Tormach around the floor but you're probably going to damage the feet. I would highly recommend going to the link below and getting these. We need inspection equipment. So I'm already going to assume that you're going to get calipers and micrometers. Here are the AccuSize gauge blocks. I actually have these in my shop right here. Those are master set gauge blocks. They're certified. They come with a certificate. You can ensure that your inspection equipment is reading properly. The next item are T-slot clamps. You're definitely gonna need something like this. Um, you can buy these or you can buy a different set. CNC vices. I would highly recommend not getting the Tormod vices. I used to have two sets of Tormod vices. I only have one now because I tightened down on the screw here and split the jaw in half. Um, something weird with the construction, they're cast iron, they're thin in spots and you will blow up your Tormach vise. You can actually buy this vise off of Vivor for $70 and the only difference is it doesn't have Tormach on it. I would not recommend these vices. Tormach sells them for three to four hundred dollars a piece. Go and buy the vise in the video here. It is 100% worth it. It is way stronger. It is way better and you have a way to actually efficiently hold it down, you have to clamp this vise right here. It doesn't work out very well. You need a hard, rigid work holding solution, so 
Consider the Tagara vices or consider a different vice, but just don't buy the Tormach vice. So a granite surface plate for inspection reasons. Uh, I have a granite plate, it's 36 inches by 24 inches. It's right here. I have my granite plate, 24 by 36 by four inches thick. My gauge blocks, my Cadillac height gauge, and my laser micrometer. So, why do you need a granite surface plate? A granite surface plate is a thermally stable, precision flat object that does not change in dimensions when it gets hot or cold. You use this item to inspect your components. You can put your finished parts on this and check for thicknesses, parallelisms, relationships to different features. This is a must have in a machine shop. I would recommend clicking on the link and going to the 12 by eight by two inches thick surface plate and getting this one. It is probably the best one you can get starting off. A six by six by two is almost unusable. That's just a little cube. The 12 by eight by two is perfect. You can get larger ones, but just know that you're gonna have higher shipping fees with this. You need an indicator as well with a magnetic base. The reason why you need a indicator with a magnetic base is because as you watch some of the educational videos, it's gonna show you how to line your vise up on your table and you're required to have one of these to test it whether or not your vise is in line. So you're gonna use this to line up your items inside of your machine test your working environment, and also inspect your parts on your surface plate. So I would highly recommend getting this kit right here. It comes in this little box. It's perfect, it has two types of indicators and a magnetic base. So I have a brown and sharp best test indicator that's $200 alone. So you can see that you're getting three items for $95 and it's a pretty good deal in relationship to how much money you already have to spend. So the next item is an air compressor. You can buy the air compressor off of Tormach. It's much smaller. Um, this one will have the capacity to run other things as well. I would highly recommend a low decibel air compressor. There's nothing worse than turning on your air compressor and it is extremely loud. You can't think, you can't hear yourself. So for $189.99, this is the one I would go with. It's an entry level air compressor. I have a much larger one in the back of the machine shop here. Um, it works pretty nice, but I would start off with this one. And the next item is a heating system. If you live in an area where heating and cooling is a problem, like me in central Pennsylvania, um, right now it is 10 degrees outside. So I actually have this heater hung up right above me. Right there. I would definitely recommend this heater. It heats my entire machine shop and keeps it uh, 65 to 70 degrees year round when it's cold. So. I'll show you the saw and the air compressor I have because I know I just mentioned what air compressor and saw you should buy. I have this one right here. It was $2,000. It was from Harbor Freight. It works fine. Nothing has gone wrong with it and I've had it for six months. And the Fortress air compressor here. So now that you have those items, you might want to go off and get like calipers, micrometers, gauge pins, things like that. Um, just type in gauge pin on here, get AccuPro gauge pins, whatever. Now. Let's imagine that your machine has been financed. You've sent your W-2, your pay stubs, to the machinery finance company. They sign the papers, they finance the machine for you, they put it on a truck, you schedule a uh, forklift to show up, you have the forklift waiting at the house, the truck shows up, you unload the machine, you take it out of the box, you put it on the skates, you skate it into the shop, you assemble the whole thing, position it perfectly where you want, you plug it into the wall, you follow some of the prompts on Tormach's website for just testing and things of that nature. So now it's time to educate yourself. We need a CAD CAM system and we need an education platform. So the CAD CAM system is gonna be Fusion 360 and the education platform is gonna be Titans of CNC. I use this professionally at the $85 a month level and I program all my parts with it and I'm highly profitable in this little machine shop. So I can attest to Fusion 360 is great for a small machine shop. And if you start off with Fusion 360, you're starting off on the correct foot. I've used other cam systems like Master Cam and Solid Cam. Um, Fusion 360 is perfect. So I would definitely go with this, but also Titans of CNC uses for the Fusion 360 in their tutorial videos. So let's go into the Titans of CNC Academy here before we start talking about how to make money with your machine. Inside of the Titans of CNC building blocks, you have a tool list that they have, but you also have different projects you can work on. The 1M, the 2M, the whole way down to the 10M. Once you complete from 1M the whole way down to 10M, 
you're pretty much ready to start making money. You're gonna understand how to do multiple operations, flip your parts, pick up zero points, calibrate your machine, measure components, every single thing of that nature. Um, and the good news about the way that I've structured having a Tormach in your garage with following the Titans of CNC Academy is they actually have Tormach tutorial program the Titan 1M. So they have full Tormach tutorials on how to do this. Something that's gonna be of great use to you guys is in the Titans of CNC machining series, they have a tool list. Now, do not buy this tool list if you wanna save money. There's no way we need to spend $1,300 on the kit. There's just no reason for it. If you scroll down and you click on some of these items here, you'll notice that this is a $45 drill that they're saying they're marking down for $49. It is a drill with a diameter of 177 and we're just drilling through aluminum. There's no reason for this and you do not need this. It's kind of just wasting your money. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to MSC. We're going to type in drill. We're going to go to screw machine drill bits, then we're going to scroll down and we're going to go to drill bit decimal size, show more, and we're going to get a 177 drill. So there it is, we're going to click apply filters. Now as you can see, it's a $6 item. Now if you want to be even cheaper, you can go to low to high. Now we have a dollar and 68 cents for a drill. So when you notice that they're trying to sell you a $1,300 kit, you can actually bring it down to maybe a hundred bucks to 300 bucks in that realm. So there's huge savings there. If you go and you buy the high speed steel equivalents and trust me, you don't need carbide to machine aluminum. Now that you have acquired the machine, you have the learning series, you have all the tools, you're going to go ahead and you're going to complete the Titan 1M through 10M. Then once you complete the Titan 1M through 10M, what you're going to do is you're going to say, okay, I'm confident in my abilities. I'm ready to take this to the next level. So now it's time to start a business. Starting a business is, it seems like an overwhelming concept, but it's actually extremely simple. Um, what you're going to want to do is go to LegalZoom. This is exactly how I started my business. Uh, open up LegalZoom and click on register your business. Limited liability company. Okay. You're gonna click on the pro plan and you're gonna go through this. Now, if you need more assistance, click on the premium with assist, okay? So they're gonna do your federal and your state filings. They're gonna give you an EIN and a bunch of information, a bunch of packets. What you're gonna do is you're gonna finish this entire prompt. You're gonna wait a week or two. They're gonna give you all of your information through the mail. Take this information, go to the bank. Say, I wanna start a business bank account. They're gonna look through all of your information. They're gonna say, everything checks out. They're gonna type into their computer and then you're gonna get your business bank card in the mail. Now, you're able to separate your personal funds from your business funds. Now it's time to start a Zometry account. So what you do is type in Zometry. Zometry supplier. Okay, become a Zometry supplier. Click on get started. Now I can't go through this because I already have an account, but when you click on get started, you're going to type in your business name, you're going to type in some information about your business, you're going to request support, they're going to get in contact with you, they're going to have you do a test part. The test part is simpler than the Titans of CNC components, so you should be completely fine. Complete this part, inspect it, and then send it in. They're going to give you a pass or a fail. Most of the time, you should pass as long as you inspected your part to what the blueprint said the part should be, and you don't send anything in that does not meet requirements. You should be completely fine. You should be able to tell inside of your shop if this part is gonna pass or fail. Is you're gonna log into your business bank account, you're gonna look at your routing and account number. Then you're gonna to go to shop finances. Then you're gonna click on financial settings. You're gonna type in your routing and account number in right here. When you do this, every time you complete a job on Zometry, you get the payout. So as you can see, I have $2,786.18 and $656.75. Once I complete this job, this box turns white. I can click on this box and click accept payout. That balance will then get transferred to my business bank account. I can then distribute payments to myself, grow my machine shop, pay my machines and my overhead through the Zometry platform. The goal here is to start with Zometry. Start off in the basic group. The basic group is level one, then you have premium, then you have ultra premium. I'm in the premium group. The premium group requires you to do 15 jobs, 
with a score of above 85%. And if I go to the scorecard here, I'm at 89. So the score consists of quality, on-time delivery, communication, and engagement. Keep these scores up by sending good parts on time, talking with Zometry on your progress, and then taking work from the board. When you do this and you meet the requirements for premium, apply for premium because you see a lot more work on the premium side and then you get to the level where you can grow your business past the Tormach. Then you can go for a $50,000 machine or a $100,000 machine or whatever. And then from this point, you start a sales and marketing strategy, start a website, start marketing to the general public that is in the uh, industrial sector and then just grow from there. The Amazon items are in the description. I hope you guys learned something from this video. Best of luck to starting your machine shop in 2025. And until I see you guys again, take care.